get started. Let me pray for us all. Father, Father, we thank you for this time together. Ask you to watch over all of our technology and just pray that you'll give Sir peace right now. Amen. Just let us hear your Holy Spirit as we listen, and talk. We just want to do all things according to your will, Father. Yes, Lord. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Bill. Thank you. All right. Well, you have a PowerPoint for us, Sork. Are you able to share that on your screen? Okay. Let's try that. You need to open your PowerPoint and then you'll be able to hit that little green button that says share screen. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're there now. Well, let me just kind of go over our agenda. Uh, we will spend about 15 or 20 minutes as Sir uh, shares with us from this PowerPoint. And then we'll spend a little time in uh, discussion. Uh, once we've had our discussion, then uh, the three of us who are the voting members of the committee will kind of do an evaluation. I will need to uh, pull other people out of the session for about 15 minutes. You'll be on hold. And then once we finish our evaluation, I'll bring everybody back in and we will announce the results of our evaluation time. Okay, thank you. Okay, well with that, Sirk, why don't you go ahead and uh, lead us in your PowerPoint and we'll be listening. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you everybody for your time. Uh, my, uh, before I proceed further, I think everybody here knows each other. It is only my wife, Lily, who sat beside me who has been through uh, all this process quite helpful. So my topic is on the impact and influence of uh, culture on Ethiopia, oh, 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 the impact and influence of globalization on Ethiopian culture, where the focus is on the hybridization of Amharic with English in the youth culture of Addis Ababa. The core issue is that globalization has uh, a significant influence on the Amharic language. And the school curriculum also lacks the required content to orient the youth to maintain the indigenous culture. And as well, the absence of an appropriate educational and social policy to sustain the Ethiopian culture from the negative impacts, uh, or at least to minimize the hazardous effects, fails to assure, uh, to capitalize on the blessings from globalization. Because globalization has still a positive uh, advantage uh, and the youth generation needs to take the priceless gifts from uh, uh, this globalization in a wise way. So as a statement of my problem, uh, the Amharic language is highly influencing the, uh, the, 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 the Amharic language is being highly influenced by the English language through hybridization. And some international brand names and advertising in the business landscape in Ethiopia has jeopardized the growth and use of Amharic language. As we can see in uh, some of the uh, advertisements in Addis Ababa, where this kind of uh, stuff are quite uh, common, if you, if you see the, uh, this advert for the English language school, it is advertised for beginners while it is written in English. And uh, there are also stages of globalization, where globalization takes the young generation slowly but surely uh, like, for instance, uh, this uh, uh, Caldis Coffee is an acculturation of uh, the famous Starbucks in America. And uh, all the, the, the dressing and, and, and the language and the, I mean, the literary habits of uh, the young generation is highly being impacted by globalization. As a statement of the purpose, it is to orient the use with uh, consistent responsiveness and to solicit awareness and as well to seek out the commitment of different associations and civil societies for creating a community of concerned citizens. And it, it is also to develop a consortium of social, social change agents as well to build social capital and uh, retain our uh, prestigious uh, uh, traditional values. Uh, my study has also scopes and limitations because the study was conducted only in Addis Ababa, it is a limitation. And the age group was only limited between 18 and 25 years. Uh, this is done because, you know, uh, uh, as per the UN regulation, the youth group is between 15 to 28, 
while the AU uh, declaration states that the youth group is between 14 to 35, where Ethiopia is a signatory. So that I have limited it between these two uh, group, I mean, uh, categories because these are the most affected uh, by this hybridization of Amharic with English. And uh, the absence of case studies of similar nature has also been impacting on the, some, uh, as, as a limitation to my study. So what were the, const the historical context in this advantage? Uh, I have tabulated three uh, regimes in Ethiopia where the monarchy regime was the pre-1973 and there was a communist regime and the now uh, incumbent revolutionary democracy or developmental state which is in power from 1991. During the monarchy regime, Amharic was the national language of Ethiopia and there was a proclamation for the establishment of the National Academy of Amharic Language which was there to safeguard hybridization. During the communist regime, while Amharic still retained the position of being a national language, uh, the ethics education was totally abandoned and replaced by a socialist thought, where the National Academy of the Amharic Language died unceremoniously. During the current revolutionary democracy, language was politicized, and all the regions were allowed to determine their own respective working languages. So the ethnic federalism in the current incumbent regime uh, decreases the role of the national language of Amharic to only serve as the official working language of Ethiopia. Uh, in the current context, as a current context, there is uh, no national language in Ethiopia. And Article 5 of the, our constitution states that all Ethiopian languages shall enjoy equal state recognition, and Amharic shall only be working as uh, an official language of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. And all the regions have the liberty to determine their own respective working language. This has belittled the unifying language of the Amharic coupled with globalization. And there is no such institutions like the National Academy of the Amharic Language, like the previous period to safeguard the realization. Uh, all in all, in all those three regimes, ethics education became very partisan to the leading groups, which begets identity crisis and cultural annihilation. Who were the audiences of this, uh, uh, my project? Uh, it starts with major ministries like Minister of Culture and Tourism and Education, uh, the Sava City Youth Bureau, the professional and civic associations, parents and school principals, opinion leaders and social change agents, the youth and culture club, the church and community leaders, and even the personal le learning community like uh, Dr. Adara and Lulit, and the BG community like yourselves as well were the audiences of this project. And eventually, the audience will be enlarged when I, I, I will be uh, utilizing the multimedia to release it through the internet and the stuff like that. So what were my personal role in this? I have studied the existing civil education problems. I have reviewed this famous proclamation for the establishment of the National Academy of the Amharic Language. I have interviewed, conducted a focus group, undertook a pre-pilot city consultation. I was all networked with major opinion leaders, social agents, and curriculum developers in Ethiopia. And I've conducted as well a survey by way of uh, questionnaire through addressing very many professionals from diverse fields. So what were the, the intervention plans that I used? There have been some four intervention plans that I used. It starts with a city consultation where I did a pre-pilot city consultation during uh, which uh, so many uh, decision makers, uh, curriculum developers, uh, policy uh, formulators were present. And I have developed a cross-cultural community network where I have been uh, promised by uh, the, the Ministry of uh, Culture and Tourism to be a participant in the consultative workshop which will be coming in the late uh, uh, September uh, under the title Opportunities and Challenges of Cultural Development with the Youth. This is a future uh, uh, intervention, and I've also promised to use the Nation, Nationalities and People's Day of Ethiopia, which will be celebrated every December 9 in Ethiopian calendar. I've also uh, uh, been able to brainstorm a session called Back to Your Roots campaign, which, uh, where a concept note was developed. This Back to Your Roots campaign will address mostly of the, the diaspora and people who have been disconnected with the, the bigger social uh, group in, in, in Addis Ababa and beyond. There is also a consensus, a consensus developed for the formation of a think tank group, which will uh, uh, oversee this uh, hybridization and uh, try to advise professionally as to what to take from the uh, globalization. I mean, the priceless 
uh, gifts of uh, uh, globalization. I also had an evaluation, a pre and post evaluation. Uh, it was conducted by a questionnaire and there was a consultative evaluation. And the post consultation is by way of establishing a steering committee that will oversee uh, the proper application of the intervention uh, plans. I have also reviewed many, many sources, uh, starting with overture, uh, courses like the personal assessment and the project design methodology. And I have also conducted very many interviews. This is probably more, the most uh, interesting part of my project where I have interviewed many practitioners and specialists. It starts from like legal professionals, senior citizens, social employees, sociologists, name it. These group of people have been the most prominent individuals in Ethiopia who are opinion leaders and, 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 and change agents where the public trust the most. And I have also, also uh, uh, re re reviewed very many uh, sources uh, by work literature, like the proclamation of this uh, establishment of the Amharic language. And I have reviewed a big holy topic, which uh, underscores the fact that Amharic and its history and principles I've reviewed very many uh, international conference proceedings by Ethiopian studies and uh, very many research papers. And, uh, and the, the most common uh, re reviewed uh, uh, literatures were uh, on, uh, by Professor Andreas Shete, who was the ex-president of Addis Ababa University and one of the most uh, seasoned professionals in Ethiopia. Uh, he wrote a, a book on modernity because my uh, uh, area is on uh, the advent of this uh, hybridization is with the intent that the young generation feels that uh, it is being modern, the indexed modernity through the use of hybridization of the American language is English. And uh, the most uh, part that I used was uh, this uh, uh, I mean, book uh, by uh, Elizabeth Lanza and Hirut Waldemaria. She is uh, now uh, Minister of Culture and Tourism of Ethiopia. She wrote a book, I mean, uh, research paper under the title English and Branding in the Linguistic Landscape of Addis Ababa with a British I mean, uh, uh, colleague. And as well, uh, uh, the Frederick Ebert studying of uh, uh, what the most common and the controversial discussion of the Manawin that was one of the literatures that I reviewed. On the biblical, ethnographic, sociological, and demographic, uh, I have been uh, able to refer many. And of course, regarding Bible and theology, Bible has been my most referenced uh, literature uh, on the ethnography, sociology, and demographies, I've uh, reviewed many. What were the key findings there? I tried to classify the, the key findings into two. The first one is on how, where, and how, and then when this hybridization occurs, and with whom. It is where the, it is the environment, like the school environment, and the, 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 the youngest generation do this hybridization during their leisure activities, and with the intent to extend to others. And the most common place for this is with friends, schoolmates, and fellow hobbyists. And then what is the influence by what the key findings? What I found is that English is perceived as a prestigious language. And it has a threat to the, it is a threat to the Amharic language. And using Amharic and Amharic is perceived by the younger generation as a sign of modernity, to be to indexed in modernity. It is found that the pain influence and then in the main that the multimedia is the main contributor for the influence of English by the young generation. And then the influence on the language also has a spillover effect on identity and indigenous cultures. And there was as well a national a generation gap, and there was no language policy in Ethiopia. Those are the things that I have found as the key findings. What were the results obtained? I was able to conduct a history consultation. And I was able to get a nodding acquaintance for the cross-cultural network. I got a permission to participate in the upcoming uh, workshop, consultative workshop. And the preliminary concept paper was developed for the Back to Europe campaign. And there was a willingness granted, uh, granted by all opinion leaders to, to, to be associated with uh, uh, the, the think tank concept. What transformational change occurred? In terms of personal, uh, I've, more, I've, I've become being more intentional in the things that I do. I don't have now, nowadays uh, business as usual. Um, I'm very much concerned with attention to detail. In terms of organizational uh, transformation, that awareness was created for the sensitivity to national treasures. Willingness was ensured for the, 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 in, in the eyes of the policymakers for the importance of soft skills development by of curriculum redressal. Re 
and the consensus was developed for interest in the mutual union approach with the school environment for any possible intervention. In terms of cultural transformation, uh, there was uh, an awareness threat to be sensitive to values of something like this. There was uh, an awareness where uh, being aware of the cultural diversity or pluralism. In terms of community in the transformation, there was a tendency to, 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 to in an awareness for public cause and inclusiveness to be responsive to diversity. And uh, <clears throat> what were the, the lessons that learned? Uh, one thing that I saw is that the difference to Ethiopian culture is amazingly key and Ethiopia is, is, is an ethnic model. This is what I learned. And I have also come across the existence of a social disconnect in the degree how generations think differently. There is a big disconnect between the youngest generation and the senior citizens. And then as well, I have been able to see the extent that language is a muscle in the fact how to thrive in a multilingual workplace society. And uh, I've also been uh, able to see the tendency to be optimistic, even at difficult times, and, 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 and practicing emotional self-awareness. <clears throat> and I've also seen the underutilization of high caliber professionals in Ethiopia, as I've been able to write in, in, in my recommendation. It was uh, very much uh, uh, you know, uh, alarming that most of the Ethiopian professionals have been outside of the football pitch where they don't have any direct relation in the policy formation and, and, and stuff like that. And uh, last but not the least is that the Bible is time honored. That's why I wrote it from my shelf to my pillow. I used to put my uh, Bible in my shelf earlier, and I have put it to, to my pillow because I like my pillow. And we, uh, Lilith could be a witness. Uh, and what were my role as a change agent? I have classified, I have categorized my role as, as, as into categories. What was that that I did to self and to others? When I'm into self, I'm myself and to the family. I'm, st I'm now being uh, responsible and, 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 and feeling ownership. I'm being a role model. And what did I do as a role agent, as a, uh, my role as a change agent to others? Being a watchdog and a facilitator for the standardization and uh, listening and encouraging others, what we call internalizing. I've started avoiding getting stuck in the confines of my industry. I've, I've, I've been able to see to a new world because, as I've been telling, uh, I, I've been in the oil industry for the last 20 so many years, and then, then uh, I have no more there because I've, I've now come out of my shell and then face this new world. And exploiting relationships outside of my books, I'm quite uh, networked uh, in town, and then. then I used to know all, all policy makers and uh, politicians earlier, but I, I never utilized their relation. Uh, but now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm exploiting the relationship. And, and I've started being patient, but persistent. And I've also convinced decision maker for the mobilization uh, by way of campaigns and stuff like that. What principles were learned to be applied to other similar situations? I have as well categorized this into two, the formal and the informal institutions. I've given more, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, focus for the informal institutions because in the process of this project, what I've discovered is that the informal institution is a major player for the hybridization of America's English, like the social media, the friendship, the fellow hosts, and, and, and the stuff like that, and the clans and informal networks or voluntary groups. And there are other social gatherings in Ethiopia, what we call them like the Ekfus, Edir, and the Kero. These are Amharic terms which refer to some social gatherings which are informal. Well, because the formal institutions are obvious, like the law enforcement institutions, the research community, the mass media, the religious and community institutions, and the associations of senior citizens, and the diaspora community. Because uh, one of the things that uh, this principle could be applied properly is in the diaspora community. Ethiopia is claimed to have close to 5 million diaspora communities all over the world. And one of the focus group interviews that I did was in the US, Washington DC area, where the diaspora community is very rampant. And then, then the, this diaspora community is as well one of the hotbeds of uh, the hybrids of America's English. So this I can apply all this. Uh, so what is the way forward? I've tried to put it into one thing, into, into classifications. There is a good approach, which I'm doing now. And there will be, there will be a good to great approach. The good approach is transforming from outside, like what I'm doing now. While the good to great approach is transforming from inside, being in the driver's seat, being 
an active agent of uh, policy formation and then and, and, uh, you know, from co-piloting to piloting that uh, is our way. So it's a good approach. What are the, what, what, what are the things that uh, I'm doing and will do in, as a way forward? Once I realize the cross-cultural interaction, once I pilot the back to your roots through interactive campaign and set up the think tank group through networking and cement the steering committee for project monitoring and evaluation, I will make sure that the cultural and organizational transformation takes place. And uh, <clears throat> once I'm, I'm sure of this and I'm done this, I will go to the good to great approach, which is transforming from the side. It is being in the driver's seat. From being uh, an active agent from outside, it is being through in, into the inside. So I will utilize the multimedia as an active agent of change, like the media campaign I will write uh, on the newspaper and I will make interviews and, and, and stuff like that. And I will associate myself with some advocacy institutions. We have got many civil associations in Ethiopia, and uh, most of whom I have interviewed in my uh, project, and then I will associate myself with that. So then, you know, once I'm, I'm, I'm sure of, I'm, I'm, done the, I'm done with that, I will set the pace for transforming Addis Ababa by Addis Ababa's campaign. Uh, it's very unfortunate that Addis Ababa has never been managed by its sons and daughters for the last 125 years. The history of Addis Ababa should be written by Addis Ababa's. So I will set that campaign and run for the mayorship of Addis Ababa in the coming election of 2020. I believe I can and should come champion this with sound partnership. Once I do this, I will make sure that the city and structural transformation will prevail. This is all I have for my oral review. I thank you all. Wow. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, very well done and good to hear all the uh, information in a concise uh, manner. We need to spend a little time now thinking about thoughts, questions, uh, topics for discussion that we can begin with. Uh, so, you know, those of you who have worked with CERC on this project fairly closely, I'd like you to uh, begin the conversation and then others of us will jump in. Uh, first of all, uh, this is Dot here. Uh, I want to congratulate CERC for a very wonderful work that is done. He's been so connected with this project, um, so emotionally, and um, he came with um, so much of a very patriotic kind of zeal, and the project was kind of very personal to him. And um, I'm, I'm particularly kind of impressed with um, the, the end game of this project. The, I mean, what to do with this going forward. And just like he said, you know, the way forward there, both from outside, from inside. And the only comment I want to make is um, that you have your plan really well set out, and I want you to stay glued to that. Because when we talk about politics and political ambition in Africa, we always see it in a very short, you know, in the, you know, in the short run. But you have uh, set yourself a very long, you know, kind of long-term project of 2020, which gives you enough time to kind of, you know, interact with the system. And um, especially, you know, to be able to hone your skill in politics, because to be an academic is one thing, to be a businessman is one thing, but to go into politics, you know, is another. And your, the way you value partnership also stand out for me. And I want you to stay glued to that. That's one area where we are not too good in Africa. Mm. And um, finally, what I would say is that you are, you are kind of preserving something that's very dear to all Africans. Um, Ethiopia stands as a source of pride to all Africans. It's, you know, it's a particular country that we can use to actually you know, interact with the world. And we spoke a lot about this during the, you know, the whole project, that it's good to preserve that. And I particularly like, you know, what you're doing in terms of putting it into policy, because I know that in some other East African countries, they don't start teaching in English until you get to high school. They teach in Swahili. So it's um, what you've done, I, I believe, is there for posterity. And it's my prayer that, um, you know, generations yet unborn, you know, we, we, we truly benefit from this. That would be the comment that I would like to make on this. Congrats again, Sirk. 
Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hello, this is Gwen, and I'd like to say hello to your lovely wife, and thank <laughs> her for joining us, and thank you for the support that you, you have provided, sir, in all those, because it takes a lot of, it, uh, of time to be left alone and thinking and reading and writing, and I'm sure he hasn't had all the time that you would like for him to have had with you, but thank you for how you have worked with him and supported him. I would like to say several things that I noticed, and uh, one that you brought up was following the time of communism. In, mm -hmm. in the time following this, there became uh, the, the 85 different languages became more federalized, and mm -hmm. it seems like you began to lose the Amharic as mm -hmm. your language at that point. And now, the problem that is confronting is that when you mentioned that Ethiopian elites and intellectuals have mm. been forced out of politics, mm. and that was toward the end in your conclusion. Mm. And so I'm really glad that you are running in this position, but it's going to take a lot of people to kind of bring a federalized group of 85 different languages back to a full appreciation of a common language, which is one side of the problem, besides the other issue of working with the fact that English is often the business of language globally. So I, I just wonder, have you thought about that and how will you be attacking that? Hmm. Great question. Thank you very much, Dr. Gwen. That's a wonderful question. Uh, as you said, Ethiopia has uh, close to uh, 90 languages. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the current constitution also gives uh, the mandate to use uh, all regions by their own for, to select their own working language. What is now uh, perceived recently by all, you know, this has been so for the last 27 years. While it is good to recognize the language of everybody, and while it, is, while it is very democratic to allow the usage of uh, every indigenous language by the reign for, for, for all religions, it happened that, especially for those like uh, from the biggest uh, population in Ethiopia, which is the Oromia region, those students who have been learning in Oromia, on Oromifa language, after they graduated, they were not able to have to, to get jobs in, in, in the news. Yeah, especially in Addis Ababa. It is very sad that all those professionals are now learning Amharic because they have never learned Amharic while the official working language is Amharic. This is where the paradox is. So now the government has already understood this problem. And there is a, a kind of, uh, 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 what do you call, department under the Ministry of Education to re-educate Amharic for those who have graduated and sit idle. You know, all the regional uh, governments cannot afford to give uh, jobs for those who learn it in Oromifa. So they have to as well compete for uh, uh, positions in the federal state where they fail to do so because they don't comprehend Amharic. This was a sad event that has been uh, you know, conceived by experts in the Ministry of Education, and the government is already uh, seriously thinking over it. And, and then one more thing that, uh, as you said, which is uh, very uh, uh, challenging is that, fortunately, uh, by the way, uh, we have now a new government as of a couple of weeks before. We have a new uh, prime minister elected due to the frequent uh, uh, civil uprising that Ethiopia had. And the first speech that the guy did was that we need to get back to our national uh, English. Because the last 27 years has been, Ethiopia has been divided between ethnic federalism. And it is, you know, uh, very sad. If you Google what ethnic federalism means in your, uh, any of in your Google, you will see that the best example for ethnic federalism is Ethiopia. And it is very sad to see that, you know, uh, ethnic federalism is named after 
our previous prime minister, Mella Zainabu. It is called Zainabuism. And, and it has honestly played, uh, you know, in, in the contrary to the national. So, uh, you know, uh, while it is good to, 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 to recognize all those uh, regional languages, while we were, all the, all, all, all the people were focusing on their specific regional language, the national language was forgotten. This was the problem that has been facing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, does it answer your question, Dr. Gwe? Uh, I, I understand. It, it is a deep issue. It, I yeah. guess one of the things I'm reflecting on is the um, Dr. Brian McCabe did a, and Dr. Weathers did something on the culture of poverty. Culture is very, very difficult to change. And it is almost that it has been let go of since the end of the communist era. And now you're trying to resurrect and bring back to life something that has almost gotten away with many people, the young, if, the, if they are just now learning Amharic finally, uh, it, the challenge is there. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand because there was a, and I can't remember his name right now, but a, 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 one of our doctoral students from Ethiopia joined that open lecture. We had a web session on, and you might like to review that tape, but he again mentioned this problem. So I understand the depth of the issue there in Ethiopia and trying to save it because there is, Ethiopia is such a wonderful, rich culture, yeah. but like in every country, <laughs> yeah. uh, it takes young people to keep it going. And so you're working with the right population. So this leads to my question. Have you found some good social activists among the youth for this? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question as well. You know, there is, there is uh, a Disababa City Youth Association. Uh, this association has close to uh, 1.2 million uh, members. Okay. Uh, the thing is that uh, there is a person called Matthias who is the chairperson. Uh, he is a social activist. So, you know, there is uh, some, 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 uh, uh, some inclination to a kind of uh, uh, political affiliation. But, you know, uh, what uh, they have agreed as, as, as uh, you know, a way forward, uh, it's not only Addis Ababa City Youth Association, but there are some youth culture clubs which I've uh, uh, stipulated in my interview. Uh, there are close to three interviews that I made with regard to the young uh, club, uh, culture clubs uh, and youth associations in Addis Ababa. And uh, the, by the way, they have already taken my dissertation paper and they are already reading it. And uh, they told me that they will have uh, a forum coming and they may be uh, able to invite me, provided you know uh, some uh, spaces allowed to entertain uh, some uh, you know uh, scholars uh, from outside. Because the theme of the uh, what do you call the, their meeting is creating uh, uh, jobs for uh, the young generation in Addis Ababa. Because you know one of oh, by the way one of the, the the major speech that the current prime ministers made is that this new government should create jobs for the youngs in Ethiopia. Because, you know, it is surprisingly that it is surprising. One of the things that I discovered in this process is that Ethiopia has the highest youth population per capita in the world, even excelling China and India. So this will give, you know, uh, the, the, that attention has to be more on the youth. So, yes, there are uh, uh, too many social activists, but the three of them are very exemplary. Wonderful. I, I really appreciate how you have gathered together so many different groups and the breadth of your of your intervention because to change a culture in a country takes more than one person. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're right, Dr. Gwe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gwe. This is Bill, sir, let me just ask you, if, tell me how to, how to word this, if you are successful in bringing about some level of transformation in your country, try to just 
tell me more of it in an idealized way. What, what, what would that look like? What, what would you like to see? I mean, that would be realistic. Well, um, if I go to your question, you are uh, asking, uh, uh, like, uh, who are the target groups as an NLH for transformation to happen? Sorry. No, no, that's not what I said. Um, that if um, Bill, is it, can I go on Bill? Say again. Can I go on Bill? He sort of didn't get your question properly. I wanted to put it properly for him. That'd be very good, Dot. Why don't you okay. go ahead and do that? Yeah. So what Bill is asking is, if what will you like to see in, in your country that will prove to you that transformation has actually come? I see. I see. Yeah. What would you like to see? I see. Well, as uh, transformation is, you know, a sweeping and uh, all-encompassing uh, change uh, through disturbing the status quo and bringing a lasting change. Uh, what I wish to see in Ethiopia is still uh, to see a young generation which is uh, hopeful. Unless, you know, uh, the youngest generation is hopeful enough to see a bright future in, in the way coming ahead. It's meaningless that we claim that we have a society. Especially for countries like Ethiopia, where it is close to 65% of the population is on the young generation. It's only 3% which is beyond 65 uh, years of age. And 65% of the Ethiopian population is used. And you know, seeing this used population uh, having some promises, having some future is what I want to see as as an Ethiopia. I tell you, unless uh, we see these things happen, no matter what effort we may exert, it's fruitless because a desperate and then and, and hopeless generation is nothing but good. So I want to see as an Ethiopian, a very uh, hopeful Ethiopian, a young generation who would aspire for, 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 for a good time to come. Does it answer your question, Dr. Pio? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Would others like to ask a question? Adira, go ahead. Yes, can I intervene? Okay, sir, congratulations for the job well done. Thank you. Uh, as I have noted, as a close friend who is working with you uh, throughout the process, in your last project, you have mobilized a number of uh, you know, uh, senior citizens, practitioners, distinguished personalities, and senior citizens, despite their busy schedules, like uh, Professor Andreas, Mr. Abdu, and Minister Dr. Hirut, and so on. So, uh, how do you manage to mobilize all these people? Because these guys are very uh, inaccessible. Uh, so, can you comment on this? Uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, given the large magnitude of the problem, hybridization of Amharic, it is manifested even in our prime minister, in our parliament, House of Federation, even in our schools. Even uh, we ourselves are victims of hybridization of Amharic. So uh, from your project, from your interacting with these uh, senior uh, practitioners, do you think there is a hope that Amharic will free itself from uh, being hybridized from uh, English? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Adara. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to take this opportunity to thank you because you have been all the time through uh, all this process as a closest friend and classmate. Well, to answer your uh, first question, yes, uh, I was able to mobilize all these professionals who have a very tight deadline. And then uh, one of the things that uh, I claim that I have is that I'm highly networked, as you know, in town. And uh, you know, uh, networking is uh, uh, the very uh, fertile place for, for, for you to knock on, uh, you know, any, any uh, information or assistance that you may seek. 
uh, it was not a simple task uh, though you know uh, because uh, people have uh, very many uh, you know like you know one of the interviews that i made i really had encountered a problem uh, it, it was not an easy uh, you know a free reign uh, in one of the interviews that i conducted with uh, a senior citizen you know he said why are you interested uh, this much about Amharic? Even he said to the extent that, you know, Amharic has become a national language by uh, historical era. So I had to be patient, but persistent until sometimes that, you know, I, I, he comes down with his emotions. Because I know that the guy was uh, very uh, politicized and, and he, could, he could think, you know, uh, the other way around. And, and, and you know, uh, the good network that I used to have has been, you know, a very good platform for me to knock on everybody's door. But uh, as well, you know, as I told you, as, as I tried to put in my paper, uh, I haven't been able to meet all uh, professionals because, uh, uh, you know, most of the professionals are away from uh, uh, direct policy intervention in Ethiopia. There is uh, one club called, uh, actually, a, 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 an association called uh, FFSS, I think you know, Forum for Social Studies. That uh, forum is uh, where you know most of the uh, Ethiopian professionals are kept uh, zipped there. You know, so I had uh, all the opportunity uh, because uh, the director was uh, a good friend of mine, and I was able to get most of them. Uh, when we come to your question, second, uh, your second question, which is hybridization uh, by uh, even high government uh, officials this has been already recognized and uh, i don't think uh, that you know hybridization uh, you know uh, avoiding hybridization with amharic uh, with english is a simple task it's a process it will evolve through time and we should take note that we cannot be out of uh, globalization but we have to make it with a human face there is this, this is the word that I, I borrowed from the World Bank director who said globalization has to be done with a human face. It shouldn't you know, go to the extent of uh, you know, uh, eroding some national treasures. And so what we should do in, in, in hybridization is that we should take uh, the, the hybridization in a very proper way. Like for instance, we, we borrowed mouse, the computer mouse from uh, the English language. But we should use it properly in a way which doesn't contradict with the usage of other American languages. So uh, it is not a simple task to, 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 to what you call to deter hybridization. But we as professionals should make a dent that the young generation should know its treasure and should hold its uh, uh, American heritage vis-a-vis -vis, uh, taking the priceless benefits from globalization. That's what uh, uh, my my point uh, towards these questions. Does that answer your question, Adara? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> this is Gwen. Kind of to follow on that from Adara, I, I wanted to say his work, uh, which I worked with him on, uh, was really in support of one of the issues in your conclusion that the government made. Uh, civic education in the past, uh, you know, more more political and and in kind of defending the old government, whereas the current incumbent is uh, making it a a a, a practice. Um, it sounds like with this new government, maybe to make this change. But Adara, your work in in uh, curriculum. But it sounds like the educational system really needs some overhaul. I hear that and read what you're saying, sir, here. Now, the thing is, in your population, with the school system that is not really doing effective courses, and with a basically, a, a, this is not a, a slant or anything, but I think the population as a whole there's at least 50% are not that highly educated, perhaps mm -hmm. to high school. Yeah. So how do the young children, if they learn at home, how do they learn from their parents if they are not in school? And then if the school is not teaching what you're suggesting, 
you know, it's like, how do they learn and how will your culture be preserved? Wow, that's a very uh, good and difficult question, honestly. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, uh, yeah, you know, uh, family is a base for everything. And uh, most of the cases, you know, the, 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 the thing is that, uh, you know, uh, there is an argument in Ethiopia that all children should learn uh, their basic knowledge, their basic education with their mother tongue. And the mother tongue is the one where they will learn the, the, the cultural, the, you know, the, 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 the identities, the different traditional values that we Ethiopia have. Mm -hmm. Of course, they should go to school. When they go to school, you know, uh, just to, to, to get back to uh, what you said earlier, uh, you know, earlier during the monarchy regime, there was a very good ethics education, but it was inclined to more to the orthodox version. Mm -hmm. It was teaching more on, 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 on the, Ethiopia, the, the Bible, and there was, you know, a, a discomfort with the Muslim majority. Then during the revolutionary period, when the third came, it was totally abandoned because of their socialist acculturation. It was very sad that it was totally abandoned. Now, during this region, the civic, the, the ethics education is more on the civic part. You know, it was, it, it is teaching more on the constitutional rights, which has still an advantage, but it teaches on democracy, the rule of law. And then the different, you know, like uh, the, the, the reason why ethnic federalism is the order of the day. It is more politicized, you know. So every, in every government, when, as in when the government came, what the civic education, what the ethics education teaches in line to their, uh, what do you call, it, interests. So my argument is there should be a standard where it has not changed as government changes. It has to teach on the moral values that a human being should have, taken from different perspectives, from the Bible, even from the... Um, the, 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 the Quran and name it. So if there is a standard, it does not matter what which government time. It is a value that the, the, the young generation should take in. This is the argument that I have in terms of uh, curriculum redress. Mm -hmm. Did I, I answer the question? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Did I answer the question, Dr. Gwen? Yes, because I, I had one other follow on and then I better be quiet. I, I'm thrilled with your work, number one, <laughs> or else I wouldn't have read it so closely. Thank but, you, <laughs> and I see uh, the very need and, and the problems that, you know, and challenges that you face. But, and like on page, well, an old copy I have, 112, you say, thus, in order to have a generation which expedites the development agendas of the various stages of the growth development program and sustainably mm -hmm. brings in true democratization. The study recommends to the government for a complete revisit and overhaul of the youth agenda in general. The youth should be champions of their future and write their own story through coming out of their shell. Now, mm -hmm. I, I believe that. But my question is, in a culture, and I believe this is part of your culture, where, like in one of your cartoons, uh, the elders are the ones. The youth do not speak until the elders kind of give permission or push. And they don't want to say anything uh, negative <laughs> against their elders. So how will you work with this part of your culture whenever you're asking the youth to step up and say what you want? A wonderful question, uh, and honestly, I haven't, uh, I haven't thought it that way. But you know, uh, once you know this uh, consortium of uh, social change agents, opinion leaders, the very good thing in Ethiopia is that you know uh, we have a divine sense in all whatever you do. It's a very Christian country, and right. yeah, whatever the church says is automatically uh, bought by the public. So. Uh, as part of the intervention, the church and community leaders, if they tell the parents, by the way, there is a change now, that there is a slight change that the, 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 the elderly community seems to listen to, coming to listen to the youngsters. 
But still, in my conclusion, you say, in my, in my presentation, I, I said that there is an amazing disconnect between the young and the, 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 the senior citizens because they think differently. And then and the role of the civic society has been, uh, you know, uh, has been put down by different uh, interventions from the government because of their intervention. You know, earlier they were able to, for instance, support 100% of their expenses. Now there is a new regulation which came some two years before that uh, any uh, civic association should raise at least, uh, you know, some 20% of uh, its fund from abroad. Otherwise, 80% should be from here. It is because they fear, you know, for some uh, political intervention. But, uh, you know, one thing that uh, surprises me was that, you know, in the last two weeks, in, I mean, uh, uh, prime ministerial statement that the new prime minister made, he just copied, pasted what I said. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, exactly what he said. We have to have the use agenda in our uh, portfolio. That is rule, I mean, our agenda number one. And he said, the youth has to write its own history. It's just two weeks. And I was so surprised. So, you know, things are now getting shaped. And I tell you that Ethiopia will be shaped in the new, in the new future because uh, there is a consensus, a general agreement that the old, uh, you know, the previous uh, uh, kind of uh, administrative uh, policies didn't work. So mm -hmm. there is a general consensus for a redresser. And then, of course, the school curriculum is one of the things that has been underscored by the government. So it's a challenge. You are right, because there is a disconnect between the young and the, the, the elderly. And we are there to cushion and make transformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And my closing comment really is to commend you, because you have the gifts that are required for transformation in relationship. You have social power, you have connections, you have uh, just your heritage and your name and your family. So you have so much to give, plus your Christian belief and, and understanding of the rule of law and all of this. So I just wish you all the best and thank you for your research and thank you for tackling this very large uh, issue. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Glenn. You've been quite helpful in the world all the way through. I'll give somebody else a chance to talk. <laughs> Let me just ask one other question, sir. Uh, okay. I've been trying to ask students in their R reviews what, what they've learned about research, uh, researching an issue uh, within, a, within a particular setting. Uh, you know, we, at BGU, we, we try to talk about being practitioners, that we're trying to, you know, work in practical ways, but we also try to be, you know, scholars in the sense that we really try to do our work in a very disciplined, uh, systematic manner uh, in research. So I, I just wanted to know, what, what possibly you've learned about researching an issue and making a difference in that way just through this project? Oh, wonderful question as well. Uh, you know, um, what I have learned is, you know, uh, like uh, personally, uh, I was a kind of, you know, uh, like business as usual because, you know, uh, the way I was through in the last 20 or so many years, I've been in the oil industry and uh, I never had, you know, in one of the lessons that uh, I learned as I stipulated it, uh, you know, coming out of the shed and facing new industry. In the process, you know, uh, like for instance, in one of the interviews that I, I, I encountered, uh, I faced some problems. And, uh, you know, I realized as well that I have to be patient but persistent. I've never had uh, that kind of stuff. I was a bit, uh, my, my wife could tell you that I've, I've, I've never been as patient as I used to now. Mm. Uh, and then that's what I learned in the research. In, 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 in any research, one has to be very close to the cause. That's why I said that to, at a grassroots level. In this research, you know, because I have uh, been able to encounter with very many diverse professionals, 
when I face the young generation and then, then when I face the senior citizens, it was too extreme. Because the young generation claims that they have been all the time bombarded by senior citizens with lots of comments and complaints. And they even say that, what do they have for us? What do they give us back? Mm. There is nothing that they transcend us to us. So I have to you know, put myself in, 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 in a mood that I have to put myself in their shoes and listen to them first. And it's only when that I understand their, their cause. So uh, in all this process, what I, I learned is that I have to put myself in the shoes of others during the research. Okay, good. Does that answer the question? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's very good. You know, one of the concepts that we emphasize is that we, when we are doing research as transformational agents, we aren't just passive, trying to be very objective researchers. We're participant. <laughs> active research, it's like you've just said, you're, you're a part of the culture, you're a part of the situation, which really we would believe is gonna give you a better understanding of what's going on than trying to be uh, you know, aloof and separate from, from the problem. So very good. Thank you. All right, let's see, is there a... Uh, did we lose Dr. Dot? Hmm. Don't see him on the on the, uh, on the screen here. Well, hopefully, he can jump back in with us here. Maybe his connection uh, Maybe so, yeah. went down for a minute. It's one of the issues that we have. There was another question I was going to ask, and now it's it slipped my mind. Now, if it comes back, I'll ask it. If not, it won't. <laughs> well, I know what it was. You know, one, of our, one of our eight transformational perspectives is contextualization. Mm. And I was kind of thinking about that, that concept. You know, when, when we talk about taking the gospel into a particular culture, we talk about trying to understand the values of that culture, the norms of that culture, so that we can make the gospel message meaningful. Mm -hmm. As I was thinking about the issue that you're addressing, mm -hmm. how, again, struggling a little bit how to word this, but, you know, you said in your paper, there are, of course, some good benefits of, glo of globalization. Mm. that come into the Ethiopian culture. Mm. But, and this maybe is going to be asked too generally, but maybe think about it. How can some of the beneficial truths be brought into the uh, Ethiopian Amharic culture in a good contextualized way so that it, so that it actually fits the culture rather than uh, you know, distorting mm -hmm. the culture. I don't know if, if that's if that maybe is too broad, but try to think about that for a moment. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's a very uh, actually a tough question, but uh, I can still uh, uh, you know uh, I mean uh, you know uh, what I view as uh, the good things from globalization is that let's take for instance uh, the, the the digital world, the information technology which is quite priceless that the youth generation should take from globalization. Mm -hmm. It's just a click away now to get information. During those days where we were university students, we had to queue for two hours to get a single book because the university had only two, three research books. Mm. There is no such thing now. It's just at the top of the and they should be able to utilize it this way. And the other thing is that, like uh, what Dr. Gwen uh, raised earlier, like for instance, you know, uh, uh, the culture that we have between the youngest and the, the, the elder generation is that the young uh, are quite fearful of fearful to talk about whatever they feel in the presence of the elderly. Mm. But during globalization, uh, you know, uh, for the advent of an information age, there are lots of things 
that we see from and, and, and borrow, I mean, uh, borrow from the Western culture, like from the movies that we see. Though most of them, and then a part of them may teach, you know, some, some, some like violence and stuff like that. There are very good, many family values that we can see from the, the Western cultures that we should, we should, we should borrow and, and, and bring it to, you know, and then contextualize to the Ethiopian culture. So it is, you know, uh, it is already gone to say that, you know, it's only the elderly who knows uh, and then, you know, uh, dictates whatever the young should do and uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There should, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, we got from uh, you know, globalization is a democratized relation, a relation to a relation. There is no like, you know, a servant and lord relation anymore, even in the family setup. It has to, life is a two-way process. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's not, not only the, the young, I mean, the, the elderly who knows everything, you know, there are things that the young know, and it should be a two-way process. That's mm -hmm. where, you know, learning takes place. And this is the thing that I think uh, that we should borrow from. Mm. Very good, very true, yes. Okay. All right. Well, I think Dr. Dot is back with us. Is that you, Dr. Dot? You came in by phone? Yes, yes, I'm joining by phone. I had a problem with my my connection there, yeah, so okay. I'm good. All right. I think yep. we will go into an evaluation session while we still have you here. <laughs> and I'll bring Adira back in. Okay, they're all with us. So Dot, I'll let you go ahead and take the microphone. All right, um, sir, you are welcome back. Thank you. And is Adira with us? Yes, yes, I'm, a, I'm around. And also your wife. Um, yeah, we've taken a look at your, at your work and um, we're, we're highly impressed with what you've done and um, we need to let you know that you've... Um... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I think I'm back. I think I'm back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's so good that I can at least see you. <laughs> so let me see. Let me put my camera on. Um, let's see that video. Okay. I think I'm back, right? Yes, you are back. Yes. So, um, so we want to, it's my pleasure to congratulate you and that uh, having looked at your work there are a lot of there are some uh, edits that we still have to work on together after this but having looked at this we have given you a high pass a very high pass and okay. i'll give you my warm congratulations on behalf of uh, you know pgu and the whole team and it's my honor to be the first person to address you at dr Sirk. Thank and you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank you everybody. Congratulations, Dr. Casa. <laughs> yes, we yeah. do. Congratulations. I have to ask your wife, does it feel any different to be married to a doctor? <laughs> so congratulations, Mrs. Sack, and... Um, this is Dr. Seth now. You, you, you're going to be living with a doctor now. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and congrats, Adara, or, you know, your, your friend joining the fray, right? Yeah, yes, of course. Great, great. All right. Well, I, want okay. to yes. I want to congratulate you also, Dr. Casa, and just thank you for the work you've been doing. We did notice that the Lord seems to be bringing several BGU graduates to your particular area with you and Adara and there's several others. And so we're really looking forward to seeing some uh, amazing work that the Lord is going to be doing through those of you who have had some of your own minds changed as transformational agents. And, and we're really asking God's blessing on you that you're going to have great wisdom, sensitivity, and all that's needed to do the kind of work that the Lord is asking each of you to do, and he's now equipping you to do. So again, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. B. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Congratulations, Dr. B. Yes. And Luli as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the next time we'll be having uh, an overture in Addis, 
Yes. You will be coming as a guest lecturer. Definitely, even more. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. Come That's to right. Addis Ababa or Ethiopia, you will be eight years younger. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Great, uh, great. Well, work. Good. Yeah. well, again, thank you for all joining us to make this a celebration as we've joined together with Sirk, Dr. Casa. Now I have to, now I must address you as Dr. Casa. <laughs> Dr. Casa, that's right. Dr. Casa. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, with that, I think I'm going to end our session. Uh, Dr. Dot and, and Dr. Casa, you can uh, collaborate together a little more uh, just as you finish the right. project and then uh, send that off to Judy and then she will... Uh, uh, do some final formatting if there's anything needed before that uh, gets sent on for uh, for the binding process. Okay. Right. We'll do. But again, thanks a lot, Bill, for all you did. We deeply appreciate your your input into this whole process, and um, we pray God's blessings on you. Mm, thank you, and God blessings on yeah. you too, Doctor Dot. Yeah. All right, all. God's well, blessing you. on you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Gwen. Bye. Bye. Bye, Dr. Casa. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>